We have learned a lot of different strategies and theorems that help us to solve polynomial equations. Let's try and put it all together. Let's find how many roots the polynomial y equals 2x to the 4 plus 3x cubed minus 17x squared minus 27x minus 9 have. And then, without using a calculator, let's find all the roots. We're told no approximations are allowed, which is pretty easy because we can't use a calculator. But if we could use a calculator, what does that mean by no approximations allowed? It means that if one of our roots is an irrational root, we can't use our calculator to find it because our calculator won't give us a square root. It'll just give us an approximation to it. And we notice that we have five terms. That means we can't factor by grouping. We have an x to the 4, or a degree of 4. It's going to make it a little bit easy then to start the factoring process. So what do we need to do? Well, let's start by figuring out how many roots do we have. As we said, we have a degree of 4. That means we're going to have to have four roots. Now, some of these roots might be irrational, or they might be imaginary, or they might all be real roots, real rational roots. So let's keep moving. We want to narrow this down a little bit. So let's figure out how many positive real roots this polynomial can have. Remember Descartes' rule of sign says to count the sign changes to find the number of positive real roots. So when we go from positive to positive, we haven't changed a sign, but then we go to negative, and then negative and negative. So there's one sign change. That means there is definitely one positive real root. We don't know what it is, but we know there's one. Okay, the possible number of negative real roots. Well, Descartes' rule of sign says that we have to change all of the x's to negative x and simplify. So let's do that. That gives us 2 times negative x to the 4 plus 3 times negative x cubed minus 17 times negative x squared minus 27 times negative x minus 9. When we simplify this, a negative x raised to the fourth power, any negative number raised to the fourth power becomes positive. So this is 2x to the fourth power. We have negative x to the third power. Well, any number that's negative raised to a third power stays negative. So this becomes minus 3x to the third power. Negative x squared becomes positive. So this stays negative 17x squared. Because though the negative x is squared, the negative with the 17 is not. Now I have negative 27 times negative x. That becomes a positive 27x. And negative 9 remains unchanged. Now I have to count the sign changes. So from positive 2x to the 4 to negative 3x cubed is one sign change. Then I have another negative, and then a positive. There's another sign change. And then a negative, another sign change. That means that we either have three or one negative real root. Well, if one of our real roots is positive, then we have to have three negative real roots. Or one negative real root. That all makes sense. But how do we know what they are? Well, we have a way, the rational root theorem, to let us know what the possible rational roots are. It's the factors of the constant, or the factors of 9, over the factors of the leading coefficient, or the factors of 2. Of course, the plus or minus. What are the factors of 9? 1. 3, and 9. And what are the factors of 2? 1 and 2. So we can then list out all of the possible rational real roots. So we know we have plus or minus 1 over 1, or 1, and plus or minus 3 over 1, or 3, and plus or minus 9 over 1, or 9. We also have plus or minus 1 over 2, or 1 half, plus or minus 3 over 2, 3 halves, and plus or minus 9 over 2, 
or 9 have. So these are all the possible rational real roots. What do we do with that information? Well, we have to start somewhere. We're not allowed to use a calculator, so we can't really graph it easily. But we do know that we can have one positive real root or one or three possible negative real roots. Let's think about this for a minute. If it's a degree of four and our leading coefficient is positive, we know that our end behavior is up and up. In other words, we're going to start up in quadrant two and we're going to drop down and we're going to do some funny little things in the middle and then we're going to go back up. Hmm. Okay. We also know that we're going to cross the y-axis at negative 9. That means that we're going to start over again up in quadrant 1, quadrant 2. We're going to drop down. And somewhere where y is equal to negative 9, we're probably either going still down or we're coming back up. Hmm. Does that help us either? Not really sure. But let's see. What if? We started with synthetic division, and we divide, trying to get rid of some of that negative stuff, by negative 1. It's an easy number to work with. <laughs> what am I talking about? All right, we're going to start using synthetic division to start our factoring process. So with synthetic division, we write the coefficients on the inside. So 2, 3, negative 17, negative 27, and negative 9 an upside-down long division symbol, and our divisor on the outside. Now, negative 1 was one of our possible rational roots. So why don't we start with that one? It's easy to do, so if it doesn't work, it doesn't take as much time. Let's drop the leading coefficient, multiply by the divisor, and add. And multiply the divisor, and add and multiply by the divisor, and add. And multiply by the divisor, and add. And we have a remainder of zero. That means that we did choose the correct root. Negative one is a root. In other words, we now have a factor of x plus one, because if x equals negative one, then our factor is x plus one. And we have a factor of two x cubed plus x squared minus 18x minus 9. Now we have two factors, and we can either do long division, sorry, synthetic division again with another one of our possible roots, or perhaps we could factor this a little bit more easily because we have to keep factoring until we have all the prime factors. Well, I'm noticing that 2x cubed plus x squared minus 18x minus 9 might be pretty easy to factor. So we're going to start with our y equals. And we know we have that x plus 1. That's one of our factors. But let's look at this one here. 2x cubed and x squared have an x squared in common. And when I factor that out, 2x cubed divided by x squared is 2x. And x squared divided by x squared is plus 1. Now I look at negative 18x and negative 9. They have a negative 9 in common. Negative 18x divided by negative 9 is 2x. And negative 9 divided by negative 9 is a positive 1. Now I've got 2x plus 1 and 2x plus 1. That's got to be one of my factors. And then x squared minus 9. But what do you notice about x squared minus 9? It's a difference of two squares. That's right. So we can factor that easily also. So I have y equals x plus 1 times 2x plus 1 times x minus 3 times x plus 3. Now if these are all of my factors, then how do I find my zeros? Set each factor equal to 0. That means that x plus 1 equals 0, and 2x plus 1 equals 0, and x minus 3 equals 0. 
and x plus 3 equals 0. So that means that my solutions, or my zeros, are negative 1, negative 1 half, 3, and negative 3. Now I've found all of my solutions. I have four solutions, and I know that I found them all because my degree of my polynomial was 4. They are all rational roots. That means that if you went back and looked at all your possible rational roots, you would find these four numbers. Take the time to go back over the material. Ask questions in class. Write your questions down in your notes.